microphone is on. So as I can tell everybody at the microphone is on. on. The little okay. light should be on and the red band on your microphone. In a second, you'll be able to get one. Okay. So, good evening and welcome to the New Market Zoning Board of Adjustment Meeting for Monday, January 14, 2019. And our first item of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next agenda item is a review and approval of the minutes of November 26, 2018. I'll entertain a motion and then we'll take any comments. I think there was only Steve and you and I here, wasn't there? That's, yeah. right, that's the meeting that we heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. I'll make a motion. We accept the minutes of that meeting. Thank you, Steve. Um, any other comments? I should also, before we go any further, say that Steve and Rich are both at home to sit on tonight's proceedings uh, in the absence of Jake, and the soon to be absence of Wayne, but we'll get to that in a second. So, review and approval of the minutes of December 17, 2018. I'll make a motion of proof. Yes, go ahead. Second. I think that's the meeting where there are only the three of us. That's right. when we continue to this meeting. Right. right. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> Very good. And our third agenda item on our regular business is the application of Hershey Lane LLC. Continuation of a public hearing for an application for a variance reference section 32-56 table of permitted uses and a variance reference section 32-201-1 general requirements of the new market zoning ordinance to permit duplex residential use in an open space subdivision in an RC zone in place of single family homes. The property is located at 77 Hershey Lane, tax map class 4, lot 3 in the R2 zone. And the applicant also requests a variance. Uh, reference section 32-201-2D to allow a 30-foot separation for the proposed complex structure. So Mr. Chairman, go I'm going to have to recuse myself from this. Okay. Okay, thank you. And that will also allow me to further confirm that both Mr. Shelton and Mr. Minutelli will be sitting on tonight's application. And James so, before you get started, there are four of us, mm -hmm. and you need at least three for a variance. So, I don't know why Mr. Drago is not here. Uh, it's your choice to go ahead this evening, or we can wait until we have a complete panel. I'll leave that completely to you. Yeah, okay, we're going Very good. Can you go ahead and introduce yourself, please? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, tip, we've read everything that you've submitted and possibly more than you've submitted, uh, but this is your opportunity to uh, tell us why you're entitled to the variance, and we may have questions at some point. But this is your opportunity. You can summarize. You can take it as read that we have read everything that you have submitted, but if there are things you want to emphasize or add, uh, this is your opportunity. But uh, please don't just read it to us. Yeah, I, I won't. Although sometimes it's far easier. Um, just a little background on this parcel. Um, this is a 12.8 acre parcel. It's off of the class 6 portion of Percy Lane, um, which is over by Apple and Pear Street and all of those condos that are back there. Um, when we were looking at this parcel and what to do with it, we came up with a number of plans. Some of them were conventional plans, some of them were conservation subdivisions. We came up with duplexes and duplexes. As part of that process, we went to the planning board a few months back and asked for their input on what they would like to see here. At that meeting, we discussed in a conceptual format some of those plans, the 
without them looking at any design. Um, and our feedback at that meeting was, and this is a quote in part, the board would support a variance. There is consensus that the duplexes would be a good fit. So after talking to them about this parcel and reading through many of the points that you have in your variance application that you've read, uh, they agree with us as a consensus with the board that duplexes would be a good thing on this parcel. It is surrounded, but what you see here, I'm going to separate the next one for a minute. Uh, the orange portion of this is all fourplexes, multifamily fourplexes, condos. And the green portion of this is either conservation land or open space land, including a single family home who's with the majority of the land uh, that's in a conservation use. So the green is conservation land, the orange is fourplexes, and where that, that gray blob right in the middle there. I'm going to open up the meeting for public comment. So any member of the public who wants to come forward and make a comment, this is your opportunity. Okay, so people who may not have heard that at the proposal is at this point is for 14. close the public comment portion of the hearing and uh, open up the meeting for discussion and uh, questions by the board. So I went through and looked at the residential open space design uh, and how many, how many lots, how many units can you put on there to follow the regular rules? For a regular subdivision? For a regular residential open space design. So it depends. So we've got um, a yield plan that has right here. Uh, so this has 13 lots. So based on the yield plan, when you go to the open space subject design, you submit this yield plan, and then there are certain allowances for, for density to be increased depending on the amount of open space that you preserve. The reason that we prefer to do two plexes rather than single families in an open space subdivision is because it allows for the maximum amount of open space. In this plan with the two plexes, it's about 71% open space preserved on the parcel. And if it was single family, uh, 
um, it would create more sprawl, the road would have to be longer. Um, as you, you know, if you have seven lots on this portion of the road, you can preserve all of this. If we get 14 single families in a conservation subdivision, it would create more road frontage and less open space to be preserved. But it, it is possible. And is this been, was this presented to the planning board? Because the way I read it is it generally goes to the planning board first for the, the approval of the open space design. And I think right now what I'm seeing is you're putting the cart before the horse. Duplexes aren't allowed in the Arctic Zone, so we couldn't go to the planning board and request that they approve the duplex because that's not something that's allowed in the Arctic Zone. But you've done all the steps in, that are outlined in, in Article 5, in Article 6, for the Section 32, right? Yeah. We do not have density calculations, the calculations on how they came up with the numbers. So as part of the open space review, the first step is to determine not only is it feasible to do a, a single family development, but um, what the actual figures are following the formulas that are in the zoning ordinance and the site review regulations as to how you came up with that figure. So you need to do things such as um, subtract the poorly drained, very poorly drained soil, steep slopes, any utilities running through it. You have a 10% factor to account for utilities and roadways. And with that, you can determine whether or not the open space development, the requirements, and the calculations for open space and lot sizes and so forth are part and parcel of that analysis and review. Right, I should have said that, not just my apologies. So these are all conceptual. So I say we have a yield plan, but it's a conceptual yield plan. Right. It has not been reviewed by the planning staff or the planning board. So we don't have the actual numbers in front of us. But it is something that we have looked at and we have reviewed. And it's something that we have looked at and we have reviewed. And it's something that we have looked at and we have reviewed. And it's something that we have looked at and we have reviewed. And it's something that we have looked at and we have reviewed. And it's something that we have looked at and we have reviewed. And it's something that we have looked at and we have I'm just looking at it, I can see some incredible contours on there. I mean, there are a lot of contours yes, on this property. Very so it could be very much less than 14. Get down to it. Right now, we're, this is our conceptual plan based on what we have without any planning review. Yes, it's not going to be as good as what we have right now. Right. Yeah. 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 Any of the calculations. Yeah. There's a lot of steep slopes on that that reduce the, the buildable areas. There's a whole bunch of things out there that reduce the buildable area. She's telling me 14. I don't know. It might be 8. If you take out wetlands as well. These 13 lots um, that are shown on our yield plan do take out steep slopes and wetlands and have the correct amount of buildable area. What I was trying to say is it has not been approved by the planning board. So you have to take my word for it and our engineer's word for it. And, and what I'm saying is that regardless of the configuration, if you've got 12 lots, 14 lots, once the planning board has gone through and reviewed the numbers and verified that they're correct, then that would be the time to come in and say, we've got, we've got approval for 12 lots here, we want to put duplexes. Then you Why? Come in. Yeah. No. I have a copy of it. Yeah. Do you have a copy of it? A copy of the yield plan. I no, no, no. believed I. You didn't give us a copy of the yield plan? Yes. You didn't get it. I didn't get well, it in my packet. All right. Let me see what we. Take it in my packet. I don't have a copy of that. Everything out okay. there is duplex. I didn't send out the notice, so I don't know what Sue did send out, but I can tell you what's in the file. I don't have a copy of that, Alex. So the 
the zoning the first thing submitted and then you guys to us or to the zoning board i mean to the planning board to your office and then you request to see some proposed duplex layout right It's okay. the plan, it, but it's not just the equation. It's the, to determine the number of units, to determine the amount of open space, to see if it meets those requirements. So it's an eligible project. Right. Okay. And in the conservation subdivision ordinance, there's a yield plan equation section. So there's a plan staff and the planning board. And that. Because I'd like to have this thing reviewed a little bit more before I make a final determination. But. As I, said, I as I said before, in general concept, I, I can I read what I don't you presented. And in general concept, you know, I, I, I can see myself supporting it. But right now, I think it's, from my, from my perspective, it's premature. I look at it in a slightly different light. We're not approving a 14-unit cluster development. We're, we're all approving whether they can do it or not. The planning board's going to determine what they can put on it later on. We can't tell them they can put 16 lots on there or 8 or 4 or 5. But she's showing us that they can put 13 from their map. But if, if as you well know, I was on the Conservation Commission for many years, and I'm a conservationist, and I want to see this go through as a cluster development. You know, we got all that land by Ledgewood that's in open space. We got 67 acres in Nature Conservancy. And this little thing in the middle is a connector between all the parcels. So in reality, I'm looking that we should approve the cluster development. We're not approving the amount of what's going there. We're just approving to have a cluster development. The planning board will determine, I would think. that they uh, have duplexes within the, the cluster duplexes development. development. Yeah. You're not approving the cluster development. You're approving the um, location of duplexes in this subdivision because currently the regulations only allow single-family homes. And that's, that's what, what I've written up here in, in my And that's report what the board has been asked to review. I'm not ready to read it yet I, because I think we're in discussion. And uh, before we get done, I want to read what I've written because I write, I write all of it. See, the difficulty I'm having Part of our responsibility is to assess whether and to what extent the proposal meets the spirit of the ordinance, is consistent with the public interest, and whether there's a hardship, among other things. I can't really tell the degree of consistency or inconsistency if I don't really have any idea what the final configuration of this thing is going to be. I don't think it's any of our business. Well, I don't know what the application is for. Exactly. It, it, is, it, it is to allow the construction of an unknown number of duplexes. Right. Yeah, in a cluster development, I would say. So I don't know whether it's going to be 14 or 15. It don't. Yeah, that, that's in that's in material. Well, I disagree because well, because we, we're not approving the amount what's going there. We're not approving the the amount of duplexes. No, no, I, We're only approving that they can do it. No, no, we, we, they need we, a variance before they can even go to the planning board, as, as, I, as I see it. I, I hear what you're saying. I just, <coughs> I simply disagree. I, I think we need to assess if there's 50, then, that, then, that, then the, the degree to which the intent of the ordinance, the spirit of the ordinance is being violated is much more significant than if it's 10 or if it's 5. I think it's part of the analysis is, is to have an idea of what it is we're looking at here. I mean, you're asking, you're asking, you're asking for approval of the concept of an unknown number of duplexes on a piece of property. Yeah, what's wrong with that? It doesn't give me enough information to make it. I don't think they really know. That's why we're asking them to go back and do the homework so they do Yeah. Know. Wait a minute now. I talk and then Rich talks. Okay, let's, let's take it one at a time. So I'm trying to I'm trying to explain why. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. What what my concerns are at this point. 
Well, being asked conceptually to, to approve an unknown number of duplexes, when, we, when in my mind, we don't have enough information to assess the, the, the degree and the extent to which what's being proposed is inconsistent with the ordinance, is contrary to the public interest, may have an impact on surrounding property values and all that stuff. I just don't feel like I have enough information. There. That's all. I, I, I've never heard of somebody coming, well, I, 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 I want to build an unknown number of duplexes on this piece of property. Okay, we've never had an application like that to my knowledge. We've had at least some kind of concrete indication of what it is we're looking at, and at this point we have none. I think it's within the applicant's power to provide this information, and it's not been provided. That's all. You're saying they can't get that information without going back to the planning board. I can't believe that there's not some middle course here, that some reasonable amount of information can be provided so that we understand exactly what this application is. So that's, that's, that's my concern. You don't have to agree. I don't. I don't. I don't agree. Okay. Because my only okay. issue is they came here looking for a duplex subdivision mm -hmm. with open space. Understood. I'm not looking at uh, 14 units. I'm just looking at whether, whether we can give them a variance to do it or not. And if you want to hear everything I wrote, I'll, I'll read it. Well, if you've got time. When I read through this with the definition, for, for an open space development, you need a community homeowners association, You've got to do the calculations. There's a whole, you know, membership and said associations shall be mandatory for the property owner. Are these duplexes going to be duplex condos where they're going to be individually owned? Are they going to be owned by one person? I mean, there's a lot of things here that I'm seeing that it, again, I think the concept works here, but I'm seeing a lot of holes that I don't have answers for. It makes me a little leery to just say, okay, we're going to give you condos, we're going to give you duplex right off. Let me try to answer that to an extent. So, part of, I think part of what you're, what you're saying rings true, and I understand where everybody's coming from in this, but even if we go get a yield plan equation done, they're going to tell us the maximum amount of units that we can fit on this lot. It could be, right now I'm saying the maximum amount of units we can fit on this lot is 14, by my calculation. So, when we go through the planning board, it could be 12. But it's still only going to give you the maximum amount of units that we're allowed to put. Then we're going to go through the, I'm going to come back and get your approval with up to 12 units or up to 14 units. And then we're going to go through the planning board process. And they're going to say, we'd like the road to be slightly different. We'd like this to look slightly different. And it could be 14 units or it could be 6 mm -hmm. units by the time that we're done with the process. Just because they approve a yield plan that says it could be 14 or 12 units does not mean it will be that yeah. many. It's just many uh, times the case. I, uh, on the condo association, a homeowner association is required and needs for a concrete subdivision, so there will be one. I mean, that's, that's pretty simple. Will they be fee simple lots? Will they be condo lots? Right now, we're showing a fee simple lot with a duplex on it. So they would be a share, one lot would be shared between two owners. It's not going to be a condo development where it's on one lot and everybody owns the lot. Right now, we're proposing that to be fee simple lot with a duplex on it, and then there would be a homeowner association take care of the open space land for the open space land would go the conservation open space land would go to a conservation organization. I agree with Rich. It doesn't matter. The, the, technically, the number of lots probably doesn't matter in determining you know, whether it's, it's uh, duplexes or triplexes or single family homes and stuff. The, the calculations will shake out. But when I was reading the documents, there seemed to be a number of elements that go into this that haven't been fleshed out, and and you know I, I'd hate to put a, a, a vote for a duplex and find out that well it's not going to be we're going to put one house with two sides to it and you know the association well it's not going to I can just see some problems that haven't been fleshed out yet. Yeah, I think the planning board process will take care of most of those problems, but I understand. That you know, they can't, if, if the zoning ordinance says you must have a, a homeowners association in order to have a conservation subdivision, if the homeowners association for some reason doesn't work out, I'll be back before you. There's no, the planning board can't just... It provides options. <coughs> it's not definite. It has to be one or the other. They could take the land and give it to a, a land conservation organization. But 
But all those things are, are designed to go through the planning board process, and I assure, I'm sure they'll be diligent in making sure that we do so. But without those elements before us, if we decided to approve this and approve it with conditions, we don't have all the yeah. necessary things to look at. And for us, which comes first? You know, do we go through the whole process of the planning board spending tens of thousands of dollars on engineering for single family lots, and then when we get all that information, do we come here and find a two plus lot that doesn't well, make much you're, sense? You're going to spend the same amount on engineering. Right now, you've got a concept plan, but somewhere in there, you're going to have to do the math. The math is the math. It says, okay, I've got this amount of steep slopes, I can't use it. I've got this amount of wetlands, I can't use it in calculation. You come up with a, a number. Right. Well, and what I'm saying is, if we go to the, I'm not trying to, if we go to the planning board, they're still going to say you can have a maximum of, your yield plan equation allows you to have a maximum of X amount of, of units, single family or duplex. And right now, my yield equation with my engineer says, have a maximum of 14. When we go through the planning board process, it might, they might say you can have a maximum of 10. So at that stage, even if I come back here, even if it's a maximum of 10, it could be 8. Today it's a maximum of 14, but it still could be 8. So, so if it's 9, are you going to come back with four duplexes and a triplex? No, we would not do a triplex. We would do a single family. I mean, yeah. It would be Three. four duplexes and a single family. Triplexes are not allowed. We're only asking but I do hear what Rich is saying, and I'm, I'm torn. Well, I would like to read what I've written, because I, at my age, I can, I've got to write down what I want to remember. And I can pass along, i got a couple extra copies. There's one for you, and I have, I have two more here. You, I, I only have two more. You and I will share. That's okay. And, and for the record, I'd like to read this. The applicant's property in the R2 district that shall be to provide for an area of transition between the low-density R3 residential district and the high-density R4 district. And this property is located that to the east, also in the R2 zone, is a highly developed area with three multifamily fourplex, additional multifamily buildings, and additional three open space lots. To the south and west, a conservation easement with 3,000 plus or minus feet along the Piscassic River to the Nature Conservancy, but I think that's a 67 acre parcel, I think. And to the north, Hershey Lane, a class six. Six Road. As this property is surrounded by high density development, also in the R2 zone with open space lots as well as the conservancy land and fronting on a Class 7 road, is indeed unique in its setting. By allowing this parcel of 12 plus acres to permit duplex to residential use and open space subdivision in place of single family homes will allow for more open space and remain consistent with other development in the area. The variance criteria presented by the applicant is reasonable and factual that one will not be contrary to the public interest, two, the spirit of the ordinance will be observed in keeping with the goals of the master plan, three, substantial justice will be done as it will allow a better utilization of the land resulting in land that will add to the area's open space, four, the value of surrounding properties will not be diminished as it is consistent with a new development along Hershey Lane. Five, denial of the variance will result in unnecessary hardship as to not deny the variance to allow for a duplex development and maintain open space in an open space subdivision. The property of 12 plus acres, although it can still be developed with single family homes, will result in a loss of valuable open space and to prevent duplex residential uses in open space subdivision, thereby maintaining the open space is much greater and the proposed use is reasonable as it provides for, for conformity, compatibility, and similarity to the surrounding properties. Under simplex, under simplex standard, the prior requirements for necessary hardship, the applicants show no available use without a variance. Under the new standard, applicants for a variance may establish unnecessary hardship by proof that A, a zoning restriction is applied to their property interferes with their reasonable use of the property, considering the unique setting of the property and its environment. 
no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general purpose of the zoning ordinance and the spe specific restrictions on the property. C. The variance would not injure the public or private rights of others. The hardship on the simplest is due to the special condition of the property. The request is reasonable. The distinction must be unique to other properties in the area. Surrounding property in the area, also in the R2 zone, have multifamily open space and conservancy land, which leaves this property unique in its setting. As this property is an open space subdivision, the hardship will be by not allowing the applicant's request to develop this property as requested will be lost in the loss of valuable open space. As this property will provide passive recreation as well as wildlife habitat areas connecting to other open space parcels that are adjacent to the applicant, thereby the loss of valuable open space to development is much greater. The applicant's burden has been met. The development won't interfere with the ordinary development of the area that it will not have an unreasonable adverse effect on the public health and safety and it will better serve the public interest in maintaining open space. Below is my motion, but I'm not going into that unless you want me to. Not at the moment. Okay. Uh, and, and that's my outlook on the whole project. I'm, I'm not telling us that they're putting in four, 14. I'm not telling they're putting in six or 10 or 18. All we're doing is granting them a variance to move forward for the planning board. Okay, I hear you. And thank you for that. I, I have some more questions. Um, the, as I understand it, the unique feature, and this is addressed to the applicant. As I understand it, the unique features of the property are that there's frontage on a class six road and a 14 acre parcel. What are the other unique characteristics of the property that make it different than other properties in the area? Sure. Well, first off, is it's zoned. It's zoned out, is the way I like to say. It's a zone. It's the donut hole in the donut. Everything that surrounds it is multifamily for housing, and on the other side, everything that surrounds it is open space. So it, it can't fit in it, unless we provide some sort of transitional housing on this property. It's not going to fit in. Either we could put four plexes and it would fit in, or we could do all open space and it would fit in. But in order to develop this property, it needs to have a transitional use that would work well between both of those uses. Additionally, it can't meet the, uh, the goal of the R2 zone. Single, being a single family development in its own, surrounded by all multi families, doesn't meet the intent of the R1, R2 zone, which was to transition and create single family development. If it's all surrounded by four families, then the purpose of the R2 zone is to connect here by building single families. Whether we have 10 duplexes, six duplexes, or one duplex, the four, if we had 10 single families, six single families, or one single family, if it's not, if it doesn't fit in with the surrounding neighborhood, it doesn't fit in. It doesn't meet the purpose of the zone. It doesn't meet the purpose of the zone. This is an odd parcel. It's unique. It, it, it serves a great purpose to the open space in the area because it's or if we can go through a regular subdivision and use up the whole parcel and not conserve any open space on it, and none of that open space gets connected. It serves a unique purpose in this neighborhood that has already been all built out with one remaining parcel that's in, in the R2 zone that can be developed. It's the only parcel in this abutting area that can be developed. So, okay. I, I, I'm not seeing the connection between what you say and the need to develop duplexes on this property. I, mean, I, 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 think what, I think what I hear you saying is that having this zoned R2 with single family only doesn't make any sense. Sure, that's one of my points, yeah. But that's, that's what the regulation says, and whether the regulation makes sense to you or me, that's what the ordinance says. I guess what I'm trying to say is that by condensing the, the development on the smallest portion of the lot, which duplexes allow us to do. It allows us to conserve the most amount of open space, which is the most consistent with the area around us. It allows those open space corridors to be connected. But see, you, you, we're, we're talking past each other. I hear what you're saying. I, I do. And as a matter of policy, it might it might make more sense if, if the ordinance provided what you want to do on this parcel, but currently it doesn't. So in order to allow that to happen, we've got to find, among other things, that there is some unique feature of the property. Not, not, not that the ordinance doesn't make sense, because lots of times 
applications come in, and we've had people come in looking for accessory apartments, and we say, gee, this makes a lot of sense in this parcel, but the ordinance just doesn't allow it, and we can't allow it in this instance. It's, so I'm struggling with really trying to understand very clearly what are the unique features of the property, aside from the fact that we may think that the zoning ordinance as applied to it just doesn't make sense, and it's more consistent to allow a cluster development, because that sounds to me like substituting our judgment for what is a better overall plan for what the ordinance says. And our task, as I see it, is slightly different. It's to try to identify, among other things, some unique feature of this property, of this property, not its place and its surrounding environment. That's, that's, a, that's a decision that got made when the ordinance got passed in the first place. It's not our job to decide what the ordinance is. is should say or might say is the part supposed to say. Mm -hmm. but, to, but to make sure that we're very clear on exactly why you're entitled to a variance based on some unique condition of the property. And that's that's what I'm struggling with. So that's the question I'd like you to try to answer for me. Yes, yeah, it's unique to the common classic road, I suppose. It's unique because it's a large parcel in town, close to town amenities, adjacent to town water and sewer, adjacent to the town sidewalk system that can serve a good purpose. But the most unique thing about it is that it could serve a future purpose by conserving the open space. Yeah, see, that's where I'm having a struggle because there's it's lots of parcels in town that are near town water and sewer. It has wetlands that are connected to the other wetlands that are conserved around it that won't be as effectively conserved if we develop in a sprawled way. It's got steep slope and wetlands that are valuable to the surrounding area. If everything around it was completely developed and the wetlands were wiped out, and they weren't going to be connected, that would be a different thing. And I, I hear what you're saying, what's unique to this exact parcel. What's unique about it is that it contains viable resources that should be conserved, that won't be conserved. <coughs> there's lots of parcels there with steep slopes. There's, I understand that there's a lot of multi-residential up there, all of which came in as grandfathered before mm -hmm. the current ordinance was amended in 1996, if I remember right. And there are a number of single-family uh, residences in that area as well, on Hurston Lane at the top of Bennett Way, along Lady Clipper, mm -hmm. Rinder Allwood. So I'm, I'm struggling I'm struggling with that piece of it. And the frontage on a Class 6 road, okay, it's that that frontage on a Class 6 road, how does that lead me to duplexes? It's how does that factor in itself lead me to duplexes? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what I'm struggling with. And the Class 6 road will be upgraded and it'll become a town road, so it won't be if the town approves it. Right. Uh, understood. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, so I'm struggling with that. I'm struggling with public interest and spirit of the ordinance as well. Um, I think the spirit of the ordinance one for me is pretty easy um, because the R1, the goal of the R1 zone, and I can say R2. R2. R2 zone, sorry about that. No worries. Um, first off, it meets the goals of the master plan to encourage and development within established neighborhoods that with the existing density, land uses, and its new scale of surrounding areas, and adequately supported by public facilities. The master plan also sets the plan for development in a manner that yeah. maximizes the use of existing infrastructure and reduces the need for new roads, services, and facilities. It accomplishes the goals of the master plan because it is based on town water and sewer and the highly developed areas. And it would be a public variance for granted because it provides compatible transition. You know, the, the spirit of the ordinance for me, it, it fills in exactly with what the master plan says, that they want these still development where it's already done to help. Mr. Chairman, as a planner, I really have difficulties with looking at this and saying this is infill development. Infill development is what we did on Grape Street. You had an existing neighborhood in, and you had a development that came in, was completely surrounded by also very, very similar type housing. That's infill development. This is an area that's undeveloped. It's on a Class 6 road that does not meet the town standards and that the town does not. Uh, maintain. And you see that parcel, which is a gray parcel, is that correct, is surrounded on three sides by green and open space. So I have a really hard time with this notion that this is infill development. And so that's one point. And I'm glad you brought the point up about grandfathering because all this so-called higher density development that you're referring to was all grandfathered, was developed in 1987 by, I believe, Mr. Cheney, who is your client or for whom you work. So if anything, we have a self-created hardship because he was the one that developed all those developments. 
So I really have a hard time with the notion that we have a hardship here. Um, and I also, you know, the road does have to be upgraded as if you are going to develop it and create legal frontage, you, which you would have to do, which you understand. But those are decisions that also have to be made by the planning board and also by the town council. And there has to be liability waivers and so forth. And I'm very familiar with that process. And that's another thing. It's not just going to the planning board. It's also getting approval to upgrade the road and providing adequate emergency um, services and a turnaround for emergency vehicles well, and so I forth. I tried to get that before I came here. I requested to meet with the uh, selectman. I was told by the town administrator that I need to meet with him. I requested to meet with him eight times via email. I stopped in his office. I've made calls and he's refused to return and meet those to me. So I've been unable to obtain that. But know? I have tried to get that information prior to coming to this board and did work diligently to see if I could meet with him. He told me I could not go to the town council. I needed to be with him and refused to meet. Well, what's no. the, what's the thing I don't know about that. Hang on, hang on a second. Because I just want to make a comment about the master plan. I, I mean, I get what the master plan says. The master plan, in my mind, doesn't override what the ordinance says. We're, 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 we, have, we have to deal with what the ordinance says. Because when we start talking about the master plan and we go into the master plan, that takes us pretty quickly outside the limited, very limited jurisdiction of the ZBA. The ZBA's job is not to make policy decisions about what is good or bad development, what is a good or a bad idea. There, there's merit to the idea you, you presented. But the problem, again, is if the ordinance allowed you to do it, you wouldn't have to be here. So we have to deal with the, the ordinance, whether we think it's a good idea or a bad idea, it doesn't really matter. It says single family. Some, the powers that be made a decision in 1996, and I don't fault Mr. Cheney for taking advantage of the regulations as they existed in 86 or whatever they were, because the ordinance is the ordinance, and, yet, and for good, bad, or indifferent, we have to live with what it is. I'm struggling with the hardship condition, as we discussed, and the fact that this is, again, whether we, whether we the ZBA, think the ordinance is, is it's good, it's a good idea or a bad idea, whether your development is a good development or a bad development, it's not really our decision to make. It's, it's, it's inconsistent with the spirit of the ordinance, because part of what, part of what the, the purpose of the density ordinance is to, is to discourage overcrowding and density of population. And the people who made the ordinance may very well have concluded that there was enough approvals for multi-residential in that area that they wanted to slow that process down. That's the intent and the spirit of the ordinance. You can read it that way. That's very consistent with the statute and very consistent with, with case law uh, on point. I'm thinking specifically it would be 9A LLC versus Town of Chesterfield case, which Mr. Daigle has in front of me. And that's in 157 New Hampshire 2008 case, which is very similar in a lot of ways. Um, and the Supreme Court found that uh, it was perfectly within the um, the discretion or the ability of the planning board and the Superior Court in that case as well to say that the, the fact that there's a bunch of grandfather uses in the area is not in, not in itself a sufficient reason to override the ordinance that says something different, but there may have been a very good reason for the ordinance to come in the way it is. I'm, I'm just struggling to see that there's enough here to persuade me that the, 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 the criteria of the variance have been met. Leaving aside whether or not your proposal makes sense and preserves open space and does all those good and valuable things, sounds like it's a good argument to change the ordinance. And that's been done in other instances. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to confine ourselves to what I see as our mission and our limited jurisdiction as I see it. And I want you to hear that so, no, you, can, so you can address it yep. and try to, try to persuade me why I should think different about yep. it. And if you don't consider the open space and the surrounding parcels and the connectivity of the open space, then I agree with you there's, there's not much to go on here. You know, if you can't consider the future development and conservation of this open space, then we're, you know, we're perfectly fine making some sort of single family concrete subdivision, but it's not going to conserve the most amount of open space and allow for that connectivity, and I think that's important. And I, I don't disagree. That sounds like a great argument to change the ordinance. That sounds like a policy argument to me. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to say that what you're saying is 
nonsense or anything Thank like you. that at all. No. Just for me. On that map over there, the, all the green space, the green highlighted, that's all conservation land or? It's a combination of open space and conservation land. Okay. The gray area is the subdivision we're talking about. Yep. And the orange is the area that's been developed as multifamily. Those are the quadruplexes we're talking about. And then everything white to that I, I can see is, is uh, single family homes. And Not necessarily. I didn't keep going. The, her you know, the I Hersey Lane. Going forever, but, uh, some of them are fourplexes, some of them are oh, single no. family, some Talk. of them are duplexes. Talking to the West. I mean, I just did the abutting parcel. Yeah, no, that's fine. There's still a little bit of open land over there. Um, what I'm looking at here, in my opinion, is, is whatever we can do to um, conserve open space. I'm all for it. And I'm kind of torn with between Chris and, and Rich that uh, their procedural issues here that we're dealing with, but the concept, I think, is is appropriate. And I'm just going to dis decide whether, I mean, that's, I suppose that's why we're here. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. <laughs> Sometimes these decisions are difficult. I resign. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want to do that. We won't let you go on. And your application is rejected. Okay. Your resignation is not accepted. And it's, it's still, it's still got to go through the whole planning board process and everything from this point. Yeah, but I'm not, you know, I hear you, and that's an argument for just letting it rip and seeing what happens, but I'm reluctant, reluctant to, well, I can see, to I not can, do our job. Well, I can see that one of the aspects that makes this, I think, makes this lot a unique and... and warranting my consideration is its connectivity to the open space and the conservation land and things like that. I think that makes it different from other lots that might be in the area. We do an open space single family. Exactly. Also preserve open um, space. Yeah, yeah, that still see, uses. See again, we're, see again, we're getting into this, into this area of policy and making decisions about what we think is, a, is, is good development, which I don't what think, I I don't think is, whether the ordinance makes sense or not, it's the ordinance. It's what, it's what, we're, it's what we're stuck with. I'm sure you guys can see this, but I just wanted to outline. These are prime wetlands. Yeah. This whole back portion of the parcel. Which are already protected. You preserve them by acquiring them and putting conservation easements on no, no, them. No, 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 no. The exhibits. Oh, how do we preserve them? We don't preserve them. We have copies of them that we put in the file and in the flat files. You guys don't have a copy of this. This is something I drew myself, but I'm happy to leave it here. Right. And if we could have another copy of your yield plan, because I don't seem to have it in the folder. This is I'm really sorry. for your protection. Absolutely. So make this stuff part of the record. We can mark them as exhibits somehow so that we have a complete. And they are actually, you know, I didn't provide, I think that green and orange thing is listed as exhibit two in my variance application. Okay. Unfortunately, we haven't seen a lot of this. Yeah. Surprises are, no, it's never good to surprise us with that. And it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. Mm. I, I cut you off. You were, you were saying about the prime wetlands. No, I just think, you, you know, the prime, the wetlands will will not be built on, obviously, no matter what development that we do, but if we can conserve them in a conservation subdivision with a homeowners association, conserving the most amount of space, giving them the biggest buffer possible, they connect to the other wetlands that are in the area, I think that's an advantage, and I think that makes a difference, and I think it, it makes it align with the goals of the ordinance, can I see your standard subdivision layout? I don't have a, uh, I might have a small one here. No, 
that's fine. If you if you do, if we we could probably use that for the file. Yeah. Yeah. Bob, you want to so just go down and look at it on the chair rather than have, have the poor lady stand. <laughs> <laughs> no, the uh, now these are all the, uh, this concept plan is not a. Those are all standard laws. Yeah, that's a, that's a those are conforming laws. Those are conforming laws. Con well, conforming based on what we They're know today. They're all conventional laws. Conventional laws based yeah. on what we know today. Nothing there to. Okay. So it's just so the record reflects, Bob just stepped down and took a look at the um, what we're, what we're referring to as the yield plan for purposes of today because it's going to be sticker that says yield on it. And basically, it's the. The number of lots that they might be eligible for under a conventional subdivision plan. Which looks like 14? 13. 13, excuse me, 13. And the reason we get the 14 in the concrete is because of the 17 bonuses that are allowed for, which again will all be determined by the planning board. But there's a so you're including bonuses in that? Right, so our yield plan is 13 and we have 14 right now. So again, that number could very easily be reduced. Which I've seen the whole time. What the planning board does is make sure that the yield plan is a viable plan that could conceivably be developed under the town's regulations. So if it's a, if one of those lots is 100% wetlands, that's not a viable lot, and that wouldn't count. And to our knowledge, we believe all these lots are viable, but again, the planning board is You said nothing. You're cheating us wow. out of your wisdom. Yeah. Well, I'm struggling with the, uh, the hardship criteria. You know, what, because when I read your application, what I got out of it was we're on a class six road and we're the last undeveloped property. Now, I, mean, I grant you, you provided a bit of more detail today. You know, I've heard words like wetlands and slopes and stuff like that. But it's new information. It's not contained in your application. So I, you know, so I'm, I'm weighing that quite frankly. I'm trying to, trying to, because there, there wasn't a lot of. I, I think these, you know, you're talking about, you know, these three guys with a lot of local knowledge about that, uh, that area. But, but the, talking about the special conditions of the property. And, that affects the hardship criteria is something that I'm still... And to me, knowing what I know about the area, because I live quite close to the area, wetlands and steep slopes is a characteristic of the country yeah. itself. I mean, the characteristic of the area. Absolutely. That, that's, in my opinion, that's not uh, the, 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 the hardship there. I, I, I can see... I, I, I think it's proximity to other natural resources in the area plays more of a hardship on this parcel and the, the intent of trying to keep open space and green space is more of a hardship than the actual soil size. But what's the special condition? I'm trying to understand what the special condition of this property is. Is that what the, the special the, condition is? The fact that, that it's a connector to a number of green spaces. Is that a fair statement, Rich? It's a, definitely a fair statement. Yeah, it's pretty it's much surrounded by open on three sides for sure, plus the road. It's just, well, that's a special condition where it's sitting. But can those, so, but, but can those, but can, but can those, are there other forms of development that could also preserve open space in the property? That's right. I, I don't. I think if we're looking at the the maps you're showing here. They come to in front of us for a duplex development to protect open space. Obviously, we can deny it and say, go ahead and build it, and now we've got no open space left. They can utilize probably 80% of that other than the wetland that's in that down the back side. And, and, and they can still build it. They can still go out and build that site. No, neither do we. 
But that's 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 neither that's neither that's neither one way or the other. But Rich, you're holding this up. You're holding this up as a bad outcome that 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 we're creating, but you don't really know. No, no. And neither do you. And we'll never know until it goes to the planning board. That is exactly my point. But they can't go to the planning board unless they get relief from us. But that's exactly my point, Rich. Is that we don't. We, there's so much that we just don't know. And we, and we do know I don't whether know how we, we, we can do our jobs yeah. on this very, very, very high conceptual level with insufficient information in my mind to make the decisions that we need to make. That's the struggle that I'm having. And honestly and sincerely, it's the struggle that I'm having. Well, what I, would, I, what I, would a, a conventional, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, an open space subdivision plan with single family homes, what's the minimum lot size we're looking at? There, there's, from no what I mean, there's no minimum lot size necessarily yeah. in a concrete subdivision. Um, right. Setbacks. It's just there's setbacks, there's side setbacks, there's frontage requirements. Um, so conceptually, and I. Would it be similar to what we were looking at with the duplexes? When I ran the plans, it was about a 15% level less than that. Um, and that's because there's no In my mind, we've, we've come full circle. Is, is these are really good arguments to change the ordinance for, for the ordinance to be different than it is. But I, I feel like we're being asked to sit as some kind of a super planning board and make a decision about what is what is a good form of development for this property without real connection to the, to the job that we're being asked to perform. That's that's my fundamental struggle. I don't disagree that preserving open space is a, is a darn good goal and objective. I'm just not sure it's. I think it's a. Pro I think it's not good. It's a priority. Sure, and uh, that's called a priority. I, I just don't see. I see it as fundamentally a, a task for change. Fundamentally, an issue of changing the ordinance to be different than what it currently says. And that's not a. That's not a job. Well, what I'm looking at here is not, I, I don't think we need to change the R2 zone. I think there's this, I'm changing my, my mind again. I think there's enough here to say that in this specific lot, this concept makes sense. And I think that's within our purview as a zoning board to address. Whether it's premature or at, at this point, I wish I had more information. If we'd had more information, I think it made my decision a lot easier. So, okay. You know, if they'd gone through the planning board step and say, these are the options we're looking at, and the planning board says, well, you know, you're not allowed this, you got to get a variance on, on a duplex, and then they come in with, with some hard numbers to work with, made, in my opinion, it would have been no brainer. Aside from the hard numbers, we did do that. I just want to make sure that that's emphasized. We did go to the planning board with these conceptual designs, and they said the board would, the planning board, the board would support a variance. There is consensus that duplexes would be a good thing. But the planning board doesn't, well, super planning board is not, not the ZBA. zoning board and doesn't know the full, you know, the five that's criteria. That's yeah, that's However, that point being made that maybe it's grounds for zoning change. Um, the town is going through a process where we're looking at making some zoning changes or hiring a consultant. Maybe this could be an area where it is changed and it, to allow duplexes. But that's the role of the planning board to make policy changes and then it goes to the town council who ultimately makes the decision. But I don't think we want to, 
think this is a, a, a spot zoning thing. In right. Like you can't do it on one lot. That's a very good point. And I was going to raise and that is, too. This is, and this kind of works again towards the hardship. I don't, I don't see that. Well, it's one lot that's con surrounded by open space and others, whereas the rest of the uh, the rest of the R2 zone is is, is not. When so the decision concerned. was made to change the ordinance to its current form, all that was known. Mm -hmm. So again, I feel like we're we're substituting our judgment for the judgment for what the ordinance says. We're just substituting our judgment of what. What good form of development for this property would be. That's why we're sitting here. That's why we're sitting here. I disagree, Rich. Yeah. I disagree. I think that's what the planning board does. Yeah. I think the planning board decides what the, the best what the best form of development for a particular piece of property is. Yeah. What we do is look at some very specific criteria and look for very specific evidence of very specific things and then we apply that. And we have to respect the ordinance as it's written, regardless of whether we think it's a good idea or a bad idea. Just a fundamental disagreement about what I think our role is. I think we're being asked to sit as a super planning board and make a decision about what is and what is not a good form of development for this property. What and do you think is a good development for that property? It's not, it's not my business to determine. Yeah, that's right, and it's not mine either, other than I think I'd like to then protect open space. Then the people who created the ordinance in its current form Presumably wanted to protect open space as well. Presumably were aware of the master plan yeah. and aware of everything else. And they made a policy decision for whatever reason, but among other things, possibly to, to prevent further multifamily development in this area, considering how many approvals had already been granted. Well, everything was grandfathered prior. That's exactly my point. Sure. That's, That's right. Exactly and somehow or another, somehow or another, we got one little lot here that that this more than one lot was was, in, was was a privately owned exactly. lot for years and years. But and it was it was owned by the people in Durham. And, and, and again, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and everything you're saying circles back to me thinking. Yeah. We're we're just being asked to override what the ordinance says. Well, usually that's our our duty. Either we, either we, no. either we approve, no, 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 a, we no, no. approve a variance, or we don't approve it. Well, if 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 they if they could meet the criteria of the variance, they wouldn't be here to start with. Well, no, 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 no. If, no. They, if they if they met the if they met the ordinance, they wouldn't be here. Right. But right. for the variance, that's why they have to come here. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, the way I read the application is, I don't see public interest, I don't see spirit of the ordinance, and I don't see hardship in the sense of a, some condition, condition of the property that makes it unique relative to other properties in the area. Whether or not the, ultimately the development turns out to be a good development or a bad development is really, is really a problem for the planning board to determine, not for us to determine. So it's not for me to decide what is sensible development of this property. That's the planning board's job. My job is to look at the ordinance Look at the look at the criteria for the variance. Look at the evidence and make a decision about whether or not the applicant has satisfied those criteria. I'm In my mind, that that hasn't happened, um, and I'm concerned about getting onto the slippery slope of no pun intended of well, uh, duplex development makes makes more sense from this property than anything else. Therefore, we should approve it because then we're just we're just gutting the ordinance and we're not doing. In my mind, we're not doing our job. So. To me, this, these are strong arguments to change to change the ordinance, but not arguments to grant a variance. Right, Fundamentally, are, that's that's the point I'm trying to make. Might not change the ordinance in another ten years. <laughs> Who it's knows? Not my, it's not, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I'm only telling you my point of view. Yeah, I understand. You, you understand? So much. You know, I do. And, and you've got to agree that I'm in favor of of this concept. I get it. Whether 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 it passes or not. I'm in favor of it. You're, evidently, you're against it. I don't know about the other members, but uh, uh, either we, we should decide whether we're going to have a motion to approve or disapprove, yes. or continue the meeting till you have more information on your part. Uh, if you want to make the motion, you can do that, and we'll vote it up or down. Okay. And then we'll see where we're at. Okay.
I'll make a motion to approve the variance requested by Hershey Lane LLC, reference section 3256, table of permitted uses, section 32201, one, general requirements of new, new market zoning ordinance to permit duplex residential use in an open space subdivision in the R2 zone in place of single family homes. In section 32-201 colon 2 colon D to allow a 30 foot separation for the pros duplex structures to remain consistent that are permitted use as shown under D-3-30. Uh, front front foot structural separation for all single family structures within the development and that the criteria as submitted by the applicant be included in our decision. The property is located at 77 Hershey Lane tax map, R4 lot 2 and R2 zone. I'm just gonna put the written form in the folder oh. so that you have it. Yeah. Okay, for the discussion? Well, my, my motion is to approve. I All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. We're adjourned.